Docker Compose or Kubernetes, which one should you choose for your project? In this video, we will look into what they are, how they differ, and when you should use each one of them. So let's start by understanding what they actually do. But to do that, we will take a look of how applications were deployed back in the days, back in the bare metal era. In this dark era, if a company wanted to create an online service, an online store for instance, they had to buy physical hardware, a server, then install the operating system on it, and finally deploy their application. Now, let's say the business grew and needed a second online service. But to keep the applications separated, they must buy another server. This process must be repeated for every new application added. Yep, a lot of manual work. Back then, unfortunately, they didn't have the luxury of the clouds. Now, let's say the second application didn't go well and they decided to take it down. But they will be left with an unused server. And to solve this problem, a new concept entered the game. Virtualization was a game changer. It changed everything the application knew as a reality. So instead of buying new hardware for each application, businesses could split one server into multiple virtual servers, each one acting like an independent machine with its own CPU, RAM, and storage. This technology gave birth to the Nintendo emulators, PlayStation emulators, and the hypervisor, a software that allows multiple virtual servers to run on a single physical machine. However, while virtualization was a great advancement, it still had some limitations. Imagine you want to deploy two applications that must run on the same operating system. You still need to create two virtual machines, install the operating system on both of them, and then deploy the applications, which was a bit inefficient. That's when containerization kicked in. Containerization took efficiency to a whole new level. Instead of virtualizing at the hardware level, it allowed us to isolate applications at the operating system level. This made things much faster. Applications were smaller in size, portable, and most importantly, isolated. To create a containerized application, you first need to define a blueprint called a container image. This image defines everything the container needs, what tools it will use, which applications will run, and how to run them. In our earlier example, instead of setting up two virtual servers, the company could now create two container images, then start the containers from these images, all on the same server and operating system. And to run these containers, the most popular tool today is Docker. So, with Docker handling containers, wouldn't it be nice to have another tool that can manage multiple containers, ensure they restart if they crash, and handle the communication between them? And for that comes Docker Compose and Kubernetes. So, Docker Compose and Kubernetes serve almost the same purpose, which is orchestrating and managing containers, but they differ in terms of scale and complexity. Docker Compose is installed automatically when you install Docker, and it allows you to manage multiple containers, set up local networks, allocate CPU and RAM for the containers, and even configure automatic restarts if a container goes down. All of this can be done with a simple configuration file, mainly written in YAML. So here is an example from my upcoming video. I have a Docker Compose file that starts a front-end application, back-end application, a database, and other services like Keycloak and Nginx. Now, to run this Docker Compose project, make sure first that Docker is installed. Then simply type Docker Compose up in the terminal, and the containers, the applications, will start running. Kubernetes. Think of it as a GigaChat Docker Compose. It can do everything Docker Compose does, but across multiple servers. However, with great power comes great complexity. Also, installing Kubernetes is not as simple task as Docker Compose, because in Kubernetes you first, of course, need multiple servers, and you must install and configure several components. Finally, once Kubernetes is ready, you can deploy your applications, but unlike Docker Compose, you need multiple configurations. One to deploy the application, another to manage networking, storage, resources, etc. For this video, I will not be creating a Kubernetes cluster, but if you want to try Kubernetes yourself, you can use playground tools like Minikube for local experimentation. Just keep in mind that Minikube is for learning purposes and is not suitable for production environments. So when should you use Docker Compose and when should you go with Kubernetes? Docker Compose fits businesses which have one server only, which makes it ideal for small projects with up to hundreds of users. And most importantly, it's suitable for businesses that can tolerate downtime, as it relies on a single point of failure, of course, one server. However, Kubernetes is a best fit for businesses with multiple servers, hosting a large-scale projects with thousands of users. Also, having multiple servers allows businesses to have a high availability service, which means zero downtime. 
So at the end, it really comes to two things, like and subscribe, your business size and downtime tolerations. For smaller businesses, Docker Compose is a great solution, but for larger companies with multiple servers, Kubernetes is the way to go. And that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick comparison. And of course, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below in the comments. Again, thanks for watching and see you soon. Salam.